which of the following does not occur in this reaction? First of all, we have ammonia. Ammonia eventually becomes ammonium. He has accepted a proton. So there will be an acid-base reaction here. It does happen. Dative bond formation. There is a dative bond formed between the ammonia and a hydrogen proton. So NH4, within NH4 there is a dative bond. Ionic bond formation, there is NH4 plus and a sulfate ion. So there will be ionic attraction between the ions. There is no oxidation nor reduction taking place. Right, you can check the oxidation number of any convenient one. For example, sulfur. Sulfur here is plus 6. And if you look at the sulfur here, oxygen is minus 8. Sulfur will be plus 6 to make it a overall of 2 minus. So there's no change before and after for sulfur. Most likely there's no oxidation nor reduction taking place. Number 18 gives a lot of information. Eventually we have to focus on the gas being alkaline. Most likely is ammonia or ammonia um, gas. This is neutral hydrogen. This is acidic sulfur dioxide. So we have ammonia gas between B and C. Second thing, a gray green solid that's insoluble. Sodium compounds when solid is white and is soluble. Your gray green will be iron 2 oxide. Finding the number of chiral centers within a ring, what we have to focus on will be the carbon that's joined to four other groups, four different groups. Now this one, the hydrogen, they are not drawn in, but you have to take note that at these junctions here, there are two hydrogen bonded to the carbon. Same for here, um, here and here. All right. So we look for the one that has four different groups. This carbon, four different groups. This carbon, the Y junction here, three groups, and there's one that's undrawn hydrogen. Two, three groups, and an undrawn hydrogen. Four chiral. And here, there's a hydrogen here that's not drawn. Five. And there's one more here. Together with the hydrogen that's not drawn. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six chiral carbons. Twenty. How many cis trans isomers does this acid have? We look at the double bonds. There's H here. The H could be on the same side, cis, nor on opposite diagonal sides. There'll be the trans. So there's a cis trans possible here. There is also cis trans possible here and here. So we have three double bonds that could display cis trans. And to find out the number of isomers is 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of areas that we can have cis trans or chiral within the molecule. So we have three areas. So n will be 3, 2 to the power of 3. Total, we have 8 possible isomers. What always applies to a nuclear file? A nuclear file must have a lone pair of electrons. Okay. Things like ammonia, water, hydroxides, or cyanides and all that. They must have a lone pair of electrons so that they will seek out regions that are positively charged. They do not necessarily have to be negatively charged. You can see that we can have neutral molecules also. Twenty-two. How can we change our 
molecule from ethanoic acid to trichloroethanoic acid. So this is ethanoic acid, trichloro. So what we are doing is we are replacing the chlorine here. So we are removing the hydrogens from the alkane groups. We will require uh, the, them to undergo free radical substitution, UV light, together with chlorine atoms. Polymerization. How does the polymer PVC compare to the monomer? So the polymer will be single bond, the monomer double bond. So this one will be weaker compared to the double bond. It will be also longer than the double bond. In the hydrolysis of bromoethane, what is the nature of the attacking group and the leaving group? Bromoethane, partial positive, partial negative. The attacking group has a lone pair. This is a nucleophile. It likes regions where they are positive. So attacking group is nucleophile. Your leaving group will be Br ion, which also has a lone pair negative charge and the lone pair will also allow it to look for regions that are positive. So it also likes positive regions. It is also a nucleophile. Okay, it's just that OH is a stronger nucleophile than your BR. That's why it replaces. Twenty-five. Which of the following will not give propene as one product? Starting with propanol. Propanol and concentrated sulfuric acid, we will have dehydration. We do get propene. So A is out. Adding aqueous sodium hydroxide to 2-bromopropane. What happens is your sodium hydroxide will simply replace your bromine on the second carbon, we will then get propene. Warm ethanolic. Ethanolic is different. Ethanolic sodium hydroxide, it will undergo elimination. It will remove a bromine. It will remove a hydrogen from the neighboring carbon. And then we we'll get our double bond. So C does give us propene. Passing propanol over aluminum oxide. This is dehydration. So you remove hydroxyl from one side, you remove hydrogen from the other side. Dehydration, you will get propene also. So B is the one that doesn't give us propene. Glycol used as antifreeze can be oxidized. Which one? of the possible oxidation products will not react with sodium. So glycol has this formula. Actually, it is uh, alcohol on those two sides. And then what happens is this alcohol could be oxidized, same as this alcohol, to aldehydes or to acids. So we have all these different combinations. A has two oxygen, two hydrogen, two carbon. That will look like both sides being an aldehyde. B has three oxygen, one side aldehyde, one side carboxylic acid. D, four oxygen, two carboxylic acids. And that's for C. D will be the original alcohol. So which one will not react with sodium? If you have alcohol groups or you have carboxyl groups, they will have reaction with sodium. The one that don't react with sodium will be the one that contains only the aldehyde group. So it will be A. What ester is formed when we use ethanol and butanoic acid? Well, we name the alcohol first. 
ethanol will give us e tau butanoic acid will be the butanoate so we have e tau butanoate